In part one of the History of Humanity series, we outlined the evolution of our species in brief. Today, we take a deeper dive into the different species that make up the human lineage. Starting with Homo erectus. So sit back and grab your favorite snack. You're not gonna want to miss this one. Homo erectus is one of the most important human ancestors in the genus Homo, as it was the first human species to migrate out of Africa and colonize other parts of the world. This journey out of Africa by Homo erectus was a significant event in human evolution, as it marked the beginning of human dispersal and the spread of the genus Homo across the globe. In this video, I will examine the evidence for the migration of Homo erectus out of Africa, including the fossil record, archaeology, and genetic data, as well as the possible reasons for this migration. I will also discuss the impact that this migration had on the evolution of humans, as well as its implications for our understanding of human origins and evolution. The fossil record of Homo erectus is the primary evidence for the species migration out of Africa. The first specimens of Homo erectus were discovered in the late 19th century by Dutch physician and paleontologist Eugene Dubois, who found a skull and femur in a cave on the island of Java in Indonesia. Subsequent discoveries in Asia, Europe, and Africa have confirmed that Homo erectus was a truly global species, with fossils found in countries such as China, Georgia, and South Africa. The distribution of Homo erectus fossils shows that the species was present in Africa by at least 1.9 million years ago, and it is likely that the species evolved there. However, by 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus had already begun to migrate out of Africa and into Asia. The earliest known fossils of Homo erectus outside of Africa are from Dimanisi in Georgia, which date to around 1.85 million years ago. These early migrations likely followed the northern shore of the Mediterranean Sea which was then a savanna and other routes that were open due to low sea levels and geographical changes. Further discoveries in Asia, such as those at the sites of Zucudian in China and Sangiran in Indonesia, have provided additional evidence for the presence of Homo erectus in Asia by around 1.7 million years ago. These early migrations of Homo erectus into Asia were likely driven by a variety of factors including changes in climate and the availability of resources. For example, it is thought that the expansion of grasslands in Africa and Asia during the Pleistocene may have led to an increase in the availability of game animals, which would have provided a new source of food for human populations. Additionally, the cooling and drying of the climate in Africa and Asia may have made it increasingly difficult for human populations to survive in certain regions, leading them to migrate to new areas in search of more hospitable environments. The migration of Homo erectus out of Africa also had a major impact on the evolution of the genus Homo. The spreading of this species across the globe led to the emergence of new human populations each of which would have been subject to different selective pressures. This would have led to the evolution of regional variations in the human species, such as differences in cranial and dental morphology, body size, and limb proportions. The migration of Homo erectus also had implications for the development of human culture and technology. The colonization of new regions by Homo erectus would have led to the spread of new tools and techniques, as well as new forms of social organization. For example, 
the development of the Acheulean stone tool industry, which is associated with Homo erectus, spread with the migration of the species and can be found at sites across Africa, Asia, and Europe. The ability to make these tools and use them effectively would have been critical to the survival of human populations in new and unfamiliar environments and would have played a major role in the success of Homo erectus. Climate change is a key factor that may have driven the migration of Homo erectus out of Africa. During the Pleistocene, the climate underwent a series of fluctuations, with alternating periods of warming and cooling. The cooling and drying of the climate in Africa and Asia during the Pleistocene would have made it increasingly difficult for human populations to survive in certain regions, leading them to migrate to new areas in search of more hospitable environments. The expansion of grasslands in Africa and Asia during this time may also have led to an increase in the availability of game animals, which would have provided a new source of food for human populations. Another important factor that likely played a role in the migration of Homo erectus out of Africa is the availability of resources. As human populations grew and competed for resources, it would have become increasingly difficult for them to survive in certain areas. As a result, they would have been forced to migrate to new regions in search of food, water, and other resources. The expansion of grasslands and the development of new tool technologies may have also provided new opportunities for human populations in terms of exploiting different types of resources. Additionally, the theory of human population pressure is another reason to support the migration. As human population increased over time in Africa, the need for new habitable territories increased. The increasing competition for resources could have led to the formation of smaller groups that dispersed out of Africa to find new resources and eventually to new regions. Lastly, some researchers also suggest that cultural transmission and social learning played a role in the migration. For example, human populations may have learned from one another about the availability of resources in different regions and developed new techniques for exploiting those resources. As a result, they may have been more willing and able to migrate to new areas in search of resources. It is important to note that it's likely that a combination of factors contributed to the migration of Homo erectus out of Africa, and the relative importance of each factor, likely varied in different regions and at different times. Coming up in Part 3 of our History of Humanity series, we will take a closer look at the Neanderthals and what happened to them. Thanks for watching Part 2 of our series. If you'd like to see more documentaries like this one, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. I hope to see you next time. Until then, good day.